part on this uh, worksheet, we're going to solve rational equations. And so let's look at number one um, and, and um, make sure you see the directions here that says you will first multiply both sides by the LCD. So I put that there so you wouldn't solve, you wouldn't use any other method because any other method will result in zero. So let's look at number one. So number one, we have this rational equation. Now remember, a rational equation is an equation in which one of the terms is a rational expression. And so all of these you can consider rational expressions. You have a polynomial over a polynomial. So 2 is a considered polynomial as well. It's a monomial. So 2 divided by 1. Now when solving a rational uh, equation, you have to find the least common denominator. And to find the least common denominator, you need to make sure that if you have any variable expressions in the denominator, that you factor it completely so you can find the least common denominator. And you want the least common denominator to be written as a product of factors. So if we look at the denominator here, that expression is a monomial. So I'm just going to write it right here. And then over here, uh, that's a number, so that's a constant. Um, so that's 4, and then this is 1. And so the, the, uh, the smallest number that, that 4 and 1 go into is 4. So that's going to be 4x here as your least common denominator. Now we have to find the restrictions. So the restrictions, you got to look at your denominators that's in the, uh, in, in, in the uh, fractions, in the rational expressions. So the restrictions is the value of the variable, the value of the variable, that will make the denominator 0 because you can't divide by 0. So for example, 6 divided by 0 is undefined. So you're trying to find the values of x that will make that will make this expression undefined, this expression undefined, and this expression undefined. Well, in this expression, you have a variable in the denominator, but it's a monomial. So it's easy to determine what when this is 0. So this denominator is 0 when x is 0, right? So right away, I know that one of my restrictions is that x cannot equal 0. So then I look at the next denominator. Well, that's a 4. There's no variable in that denominator. So this denominator will never be 4. And this is a 1 right here, and that will never be, I'm sorry, this denominator will never be 0, excuse me. And so this is a 1 here, and that denominator will never be 0 as well. So the only restriction is x cannot equal 0. All right, and there's your least common denominator. I found my restriction. And now, remember, the direction says the way I want you to do this is to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So I'm telling you which way I want you to do this. All right, so you're going to, you're going to, um, now notice that this um, left-hand side here consists of two rational expressions. So put that in brackets or parentheses. Does not matter. So I have 6 divided by x plus x minus 3 divided by 4, right? And and equal, um, I'm going to put some space here, equal 2. Alright, so all I did was just rewrote this. I put this in brackets because, because remember, you have to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So this side and this side. And on this side, there are two rational expressions. So basically, what's going to happen is that both of those has to be multiplied by 4x. So, and so multiply both sides by 4x. So what you do to one side, you do to the other. All right, so I'm going to distribute here. So I get 4x times 6 divided by x plus 4x times x minus 3 divided by 4 equal. And then I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this out. 4x times 2 is 8x. All right, over here, let's go ahead and reduce. So I can reduce the, uh, remember the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to get these, these uh, denominators to be factors of 1s. You want this to be a 1 right here, and you now have a 1. So when you reduce, this x divides out into this x, so you get factors of 1. And the same thing here, this 4 divides out into this 4, okay? And so, so 4 times 1 times 6, so notice these are all factors right here, 4, 1, and 6. 6 divided by 1 is 6. So 4 times 1 times 6 is 24, plus, and over here I have 1 times x, and this right here x minus 3 divided by 1 is x minus 3, but be careful here because this, this uh, x minus 3, this expression, has to be multiplied by that x. So everything inside 
that expression here, every term, has to be multiplied by x. Now remember, 1 times x is x, right? So the best way to write this, just to be careful, is to say 1 times x is x, and x has to be multiplied by x minus 3. And then that's going to equal 8x. All right, so that's how you want to write this. And now you can distribute. And so I have 24 plus x times x is x squared. x times a negative 3 is a negative 3x equal 8x. All right, now, um, now notice I went from a rational equation to a quadratic equation. And so we know that to solve a quadratic equation, I've got to put this in standard form. So when I put this in standard form, I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. Remember what you did one side, do the other. And so when I combine like terms and put in descending order, I get x squared. Negative 3x and a negative 8x is a negative 11x. Um, and then, and then um, uh, 24, right? Plus 24 equals 0. All right, and then this is going to be factorable. Uh, you, you could solve this equation using quadratic formula, but it's, it's quicker to just go ahead and, and factor this. So when I factor this quadratic equation, this quadratic expression right here, I get x minus 8 times x minus 3 equals 0. And then using a zero factor problem, I set each of those equal to 0. And so when I do that, I'm going to get x to equal 8 and x to equal 3. Now let's now remember these these right here, these two are solutions to this to this quadratic equation here and here and here, right? So so listen to what I'm saying. So these are solutions to all of these these quadratic equations that you have here. But remember, your original problem was not a quadratic equation. Your original problem was a rational equation. So you have to check for any extraneous solutions, so any any false solutions. And for a rational equation, if you did all this work correct, all you have to do is just look at the restrictions. So are any of these proposed solutions a restriction? And the answer is no. So therefore, these are your solutions. So, so the solutions are, solutions are, now when I, when I say solutions, I mean the solution to the original equation. The solutions are, x equal 8 and x equal 3. All right? That was number 1. All right, so let's so so in this problem we didn't have any so we didn't have any um, extraneous solutions, right? There weren't any. Okay. So let's look at number 2. So number 2, we have this problem for number 2. We have um, 9 divided by x squared plus 2x equal 6 divided by x squared. All right, so I have that. So 9 divided by x squared plus 2x equal um, 6 divided by x squared. Now remember, um, I, have, I have this rational equation. Notice that both of those denominators contain rational, uh, contain variable expressions, contain a variable. So I've got to find the least common denominator. And to find the least common denominator, you need to make sure that you factor all of the denominators. So if you look at this denominator right here, both of these terms have a variable x in common. So the GCF here is x. So I can factor out an x. So when I factor out an x, I get x times x plus 2. All right. So the factors in my denominator are one of them is x and the other one is x plus 2. In this denominator, I have two See the exponent? Two factors of x. So my least common denominator, so let's look at that first factor here. I have one factor of x here. I have two factors of x here. So I'm going to need two factors of x in my denominator. I'm sorry, in my least common denominator. My next factor is x plus 2. I'm going to need a factor of x plus 2 in, the in my LCD, in my least common denominator. So I have one here. I don't have any here. See, there's no x plus 2 here, so I just need one of them. So there's your least common denominator. So your least common denominator is x squared times x plus 2. Now you got to find your restrictions. So let's go ahead and find the restrictions. And to find the restrictions, all, you, all you're doing is going to the denominator and looking at each of those factors. That's why it's, it's, it's um, important that you factor the denominators. So not only to find the least common denominator, but also to find the restrictions. 
because it's easier to find the restrictions if you're looking at factors. So this factor is x. So the question is, what makes this factor 0? Well, this factor is 0 when x is 0. So one of my restrictions is that x cannot be 0. And then over here, I have x plus 2. So when is x plus 2 equal to 0? So in your mind, you're asking, when is this equal to 0, right? Well, x plus 2 is equal to 0 when x equals negative 2. So there's another restriction. And over here, this is x squared. And so, so x squared means x times x, which, which basically you're saying, let me show you, you're saying x squared equals 0, right? And so you're asking what number times itself, x times x, so what number times itself is 0? Well, 0. So x equals 0. 0 times 0 is 0. And so, but we already know that, we already have that restriction that is 0. So, so number two, there are only two restrictions, zero and negative two, and there's your least common denominator. Once you find your least common denominator, you're now going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Notice on this side, I just have one fraction. On this side, I have one fraction. So I don't need any brackets, just like I did here. So you see how I put brackets here because there were two terms on, on the left side. Here, I just see one fraction, one fraction. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So let's just put that right here. So I have x squared times x plus 2 times that first fraction, 9 divided by, and make sure you put it in factor form. Don't leave it as x squared plus 2x. Write as x times x plus 2. And the reason for that is because uh, if it's in factor form, you can easily reduce because your LCD is in terms, is written as a product of factors equal and then x squared times x plus 2 the LCD times that uh, rational expression that's on the right hand side 6 divided by x squared all right and now you're going to reduce so so right away you can and remember the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to get these uh, factors on here to be ones factors of ones and so now if you if, if you did the LCD correct these should be factors of ones so notice the x plus 2 divide out see that and then this x will divide into one of these. So remember, you have two factors of x here. So you're going to be left with 1. And over here, these two factors of x divide into these two factors of x. And so now what you have is x times 1 times 9, because 1 times 1 is 1. 9 divided by 1 is 9. So x times 1 times 9 is 9x. Equal, over here, you have 1 times x plus 2 times 6. 6 divided by 1 is 6. So I put that 6 in front, so I get 6 times x plus 2. All right, so I want you to notice this. So in number 1, this, uh, this rational equation led to a quadratic equation. See that? A quadratic equation. Here, though, if this is not quadratic, this is linear. So, so this one, this... Uh, uh, rational equation led to a linear equation. So just, just be aware that's linear. Okay, so I'm going to distribute. So I get 9x equal 6x plus 12. 6 times 2 is 12. Uh, subtracting, oops, subtracting 6x from both sides. I get 9x minus 6x is 3x equal, and then this is 0, and then 12. Divide both sides by 3. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. I get x to be 4. So that's my proposed solution. So this solution is a solution to this linear equation that I've written, all these linear equations. But is it a solution to the um, rational equation? So in other words, is x equal 4 an extraneous solution? And really all you do is just look at your restrictions. And so my restrictions are 0, negative 2. x equal 4 is not one of those restrictions. So there's my solution. All right, so there aren't any, there are no, there are no extraneous solutions. So this is my solution. So the solution is, solution is x equal 4. Remember, there are no extraneous solutions. All right, so that's your solution, x equal 4. All right, so that's number 2. So let's look at number 3. So number 3, we have this for number 3. All right, we have 2x divided by x plus 1 equal 1 
divided by x minus 1 minus 2 divided by x plus 1. All right, so, so notice that I have three rational expressions. And these denominators, x minus 1, I'm sorry, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, uh, these, these rational expressions, I'm sorry, the variable expressions cannot be factored any further. So it's pretty easy in this case to, to find the least common denominator. So every factor you see has to be in the LCD. Because remember, you, when, when you multiply both sides by the LCD, you need this to be a 1. So if, if I'm going to make sure that this factor becomes a 1, it better be in the LCD. So it put x plus 1. Then my next factor I see is x minus 1. I've got to put in the LCD. Remember, it's a product. So I'll put a comma here. It's a product of factors. The next factor is x plus 1. I already have it. Don't list it again because it's no longer a least common denominator. It's a common denominator. And if you put an x plus 1 right here, it's going to make this right here extremely challenging for you. So always use the least. All right, so there's my least common denominator. Now we've got to find the restrictions. Finding the restrictions is pretty easy for this one because all you do is ask is asking yourself, when is this denominator zero? Because remember, a rational, a rational expression is undefined when the denominator is zero. So you're just asking yourself this. You're saying, where is x plus 1 equal to zero? Well, x plus 1 is equal to zero when x equals negative 1. So there's one of your restrictions. x cannot equal negative 1. The next one is x minus 1, same thing. Where is x minus 1 equal to 0? Well, x minus 1 is equal to 0 when x equals 1. So there's your other restriction. This denominator, x plus 1, I already dealt with it. So that's going to, the denominator is going to be 0 when x is negative 1, and I already have it listed. So there are only two restrictions, negative 1 and 1. All right, so once you find your least common denominator, once you find your restrictions, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So, so I'm going to have the least common denominator times the first rational expression, so the left-hand side. So you're going to say x plus 1, x minus 1, times 2x, divided by x plus 1, equal. And on this side, I have two rational expressions, so I'll put that in brackets. So I have the least common denominator times, and over here I have 1 divided by x minus 1, minus 2 divided by x plus 1. All right, and so um, let's go ahead and get rid of the brackets now. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute. And let me go ahead and just rewrite this one over. So I have x plus 1 times x minus 1 times 2x divided by x plus 1 equal. And then x plus 1, the LCD, times, that, uh, times this rational expression, minus, subtract, the LCD, just like this, times this rational expression. All right, now remember the whole the whole point of multiplying both sides by the least common denominator is to get these, these is to clear your fractions, which implies that you want these uh, denominators to be factors of ones. So you're clearing your fractions. So, so this factor better appear somewhere in the LCD, right? And so it does. So these factors divide out just like this over here. So notice you have a one right here. Um, same thing here, so these factors divide out, the x minus 1's, and then over here, the x plus 1's divide out. And so what I have now is 1 times x minus 1 times 2x. 2x divided by 1 is 2x. I'm going to put this monomial in front, because 1 times 2x, remember multiplication is commutative, the order in which you multiply does not matter. 1 times 2x is 2x, and then let's put 2x in front. So 2x times x minus 1 equal. Over here, I have x plus 1 times 1 times 1 is just x plus 1, right? Now be careful here because that's a subtraction. So, so let me go ahead and write this right here. So subtract. And then here I have 1 times x minus 1 times 2. This is 2 right here. 2 divided by 1 is 2. So 1, remember, multiplication is commutative. The order in which you multiply does not matter. 1 times 2 is 2, so let's put the 2 in front. So it'll be 2 times x minus 1, just like this. So this right here is this, okay? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and distribute and distribute here as well. Okay, so, so notice I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go from a uh, rational equation, and this is going to be quadratic. 
because 2x times x is 2x squared. So I have this, this uh, squared term. 2x times a negative 1 is a negative 2x equal x plus 1. And I'm going to distribute the negative 2 here. So negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2. Combining like terms on this side, I have 2x squared minus 2x equal, and then x and a negative 2x is a negative x. 1 plus 2 is 3. All right, so let's go ahead and put this quadratic equation in standard form. So we go ahead and add x to both sides, just like this. Combining like terms, I have 2x squared. And then a negative 2x and a positive x is a negative x equal, this is 0, 3. And then subtracting 3 from both sides, I get 2x squared minus, oops, 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. All right, so... At this point, uh, and this is factorable, but at this point you can you can factor or you can use quadratic formula. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and factor this. And so, so when I factor this, I'm going to get two um, x minus three times x plus one equals zero. So this is factorable into this product here, the product of these two binomials. Setting each of those factors equal to zero, and you can always check, right? using the fall method. 2x times x is 2x squared. The outer is 2x. The inner is a negative 3x. 2x and a negative 3x is a negative x. And the negative, the last, negative 3 times 1 is a negative 3. All right, so always check before going any further. Make sure that what you have gives you this back when you foil it out. So setting each factor equal to 0, I get my proposed solutions to be um, x equal, so 2x equals 3, so divide both sides by 2, I get 3 halves. Over here, when I subtract 1 from both sides, I get it to be negative 1. So those are my proposed solutions, right? Now remember, these, these two solutions are solutions to this quadratic equation. That, that's true. They are solutions to, this, to these quadratic equations. Now remember, all these quadratic equations are equivalent. They're the same. They just look different, but they are equivalent. Um, but the question is, are these are these uh, proposed solutions, are these solutions that's a solution to this quadratic equation, a solution to the rational equation? So are any of these are any of these extraneous? Well, for a rational equation, all you all you really need to look at is the restrictions. So the restrictions are negative one and one. You notice that one of your proposed solutions right here is a restriction. So this right here is an extraneous, this is an extraneous solution. So that's a false solution. It is a solution to this quadratic, but it's not a solution to the rational because x equal negative 1 makes this denominator 0 because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, right? So 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2, but negative 2 divided by 0 is undefined. Same thing here, it makes this denominator zero as well. Okay, so the only solution, only solution is x equal three halves. Okay, all right. So remember, the, this is one that's restriction. That, 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 that's a restriction. So that's the one that's extraneous. So this is the one that's, that's the only solution. All right, so make sure you indicate um, which one's the solution. So, so to be on the safe side, it's always a good idea to say the solution is x equal 3 halves. And then say, and then say, um, x equal negative 1 is extraneous, and just, if you need to, cross it out, right? Just say it's extraneous. All right. And then finally, number 4. So let's check number 4. So number 4, we have, let's see, number 4. Okay, so here's number 4. And 4, we have x divided by x minus 4 minus 4 divided by x plus 5 equal 36 divided by x squared plus x minus 20. All right, and uh, so, so we need to find the least common denominator. Um, and remember, the whole point of multiplying both sides by the least common denominator is to clear those fractions. So you want 
the factors down here to be factors of ones. And so notice x minus 4, this variable expression, I cannot factor any further. I can't factor this one either. But I can factor this quadratic expression right here. And when I factor it, it actually is the, uh, these two factors here. So when you factor, you're going to get x minus 4 times x plus 5. And you can check it and see that that's true. x times x is x squared. The outer, if you use FOIL, F-O-I-L, the outer is 5x, the inner is negative 4x, and when you add those, you get positive x, and then negative 4 times 5 is a negative 20. All right, so now it's easy to find the least, the least common denominator. So remember, the least common denominator is a product of factors that you get from your denominators in the rational uh, equation. So I see an x minus 4 here, so that has to be part of your least common, uh, least common denominator. That has to be one of your factors. Here's another factor, x plus 5. Now remember, it must be written as a product. Don't put a comma here. It's got to be written as a product, just like this. Your next factor is x minus 4, but I already have it listed. So I'll list it again because then it's no longer a least. It's just a common denominator. And the same thing here, I already have that listed. All right, so now the restrictions. So to find the restrictions, uh, all you do is just look at the denom the, the, the denominators and ask yourself, where is x minus 4 equal to 0? Well, x minus 4 is equal to 0, so what makes that denominator 0, right? What makes this ex uh, rational expression undefined? So x minus 4 is equal to 0 when x equals 4. So there's one of your restrictions. x cannot equal 4. Your other uh, denominator is x plus 5. So where is x plus 5 equal to 0? Well, x plus 5 is equal to 0 when x equals negative 5, solving this linear equation. So there's your other restriction. My next denominator has two factors. So you can look at two fa uh, these two factors. You can ask yourself, what makes this factor 0? I already talked about that. This factor is 0 when x is 4, and this factor is 0 when x is negative 5. And I already have those listed. So there's only two restrictions. So there's the least common denominator, and those are restrictions. So now we're going to take that least common denominator, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. On the left side, you have those two rational expressions, so I'm going to put that in parentheses. So I get x minus 4 times x plus 5 times the left-hand side, x divided by x minus 4 minus 4 divided by x plus 5, equal on this side, the LCD, when we multiply both sides by the least common denominator, times this rational expression here, but don't write it as x squared plus x minus 20. Write it in factored form. And so when you write it in factored form, right away, you know, you know right away, that both of these factors divide into both of these factors. All right, so let's go ahead and distribute. And so I have the least common denominator times each of those rational expressions. So I have x minus 4, times x plus 5 times x divided by x minus 4 minus, and then the least common denominator, x minus 4, x plus 5 times that second rational expression, 4 divided by x plus 5 equal. Now I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going ahead and reduce this right here. So these x minus 4s divide out, and these x plus 5s divide out. And remember the whole point of multiplying by the LCD right here is to get these factors to be factors of 1s. So you want these these denominators to, to clear. You want to clear the, the fraction. And so 1 times 1 times 36, 36, see that's 1 times 1, so 36 divided by 1 is 1. I'm sorry, 36. So 1 times 1 times 36 is 36. And then now let's go ahead and reduce these. So these x minus 4s divide out, these factors divide out. You're left with factors of 1. x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 is 1. x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 is 1. Same thing here. So these divide out. And so you're left with, remember, multiplication is commutative. So the order in which you multiply does not matter. So you have three things you're multiplying together. 1 times x plus 5 times x. So I'm going to put the x in front because it's a monomial. This is a binomial. So 1 times this x is x. So I get x times x plus 5 minus over here, I have this binomial times 1 times 4. So 1 times 4 is 4, right? 
be 4 divided by 1 is 4. And we'll put the 4 in front. So 4 times x minus 4, just like this, equal 36. And now, we're get, uh, notice I have parentheses. So I'm going to have to use the distributive property again. And when I do that, I get x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. A negative 4 times x is a negative 4x. A negative 4 times a negative 4 is a positive 16 equal 36. So I went from a rational equation to a quadratic equation. So these two here are quadratic. They're equivalent. And I'm going to put this, let's go ahead and combine like terms right here first. So 5x and a negative 4x is x. So I get x squared plus x plus 16 equal 36. And then putting this in standard form. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides, align your like terms, and then combine like terms. I get x squared plus x, and when I combine these, these constants here, 16 and a negative 36 is a negative 20 equal 36 minus 36 is 0. And at this point, you can use the quadratic formula, but, the, but this quadratic expression right here is factorable. So let's go ahead and factor this. And so when I factor this, I get x plus 5 times x minus 4 equals 0. And then setting each factor equal to 0 using the zero factor property, I get x plus 5 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0. So x plus 5 is 0 when x equals negative 5, x minus 4 is 0 when x equals 4. Now those two solutions are solutions to all of these quad, uh, quadratic equations right here these quadratic equations. But the question is, are these solutions to the rational equation? That's where the restrictions come in. I want you to notice the restrictions are 4 and negative 5. Notice that's what you have here, right? So both of these, both of these are extraneous. Both are extraneous. Extraneous solutions, right? And so since both of my proposed solutions are extraneous solutions, you're going to say the answer you're going to say no solution. So, so this, this uh, rational equation has no solution. All right. Okay, and so that is it. So that is the key to um, the worksheet on solving rational equations. Now, it did say lead to quadratic. So we saw that number two, it did not lead to quadratic equation. It led to a linear equation, but the other three did. The other three did lead to a quadratic equation. All right, so that is the key to this worksheet.